Tinubu appoints Ambassador Mohamed as new DIA DG, names Adola Ajayi DG of DSS. Charges them to reposition intelligence agencies, tackle security challenges. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of new Directors General for the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, and the Department of State Services, DSS, presidential spokesperson, Ajurin Jalali, in a release issued on Monday, stated that Ambassador Mohamed Mohamed is the new Director General of the NIA, while Mr. Adola Oluwatosin Ajayi is the new Director General of the DSS. The new appointments, he said, was sequel to the resignation of the previous NIA and DSS chiefs, President. Tinubu expects that the new security chiefs will work assiduously to reposition the two intelligence agencies for better results and charges them to bring their experience to bear in tackling the security challenges bedeviling the country through enhanced collaboration with sister agencies and in surgical alignment with the Office of the National Security Advisor, ONSA. The President thanked the outgoing Directors General of the two pivotal intelligence agencies for their services to the nation. While wishing them success in their future endeavours, the former Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, had on Saturday submitted his letter of resignation to President Bola Tanubu at the State House, Abuja. Abubakar tendered his resignation after meeting with President Tanubu citing personal and family reasons for quitting the job. The ex-NIA boss was first appointed in 2018 by former President Muhammadu Buhari, who extended his stay in office in December 2021. Ambassador Mohamed has had an illustrious career in the Foreign Service since joining the NIA in 1995. He had served in various roles, culminating in his promotion to the rank of director and his subsequent appointment as the head of the Nigerian mission to Libya. The 1990 graduate of Bayero University, Kano, had served in North Korea, Pakistan, Sudan, and at the State House, Abuja. The new DSS DG, Mr. Adola Jai, rose through the ranks to attain his current post of Assistant Director General of the Service. He had, at various times, served as State Director in Borchi, Enugu, Bayelsa, Rivers, and Kogi. The Nigerian Police Force has condemned alleged unprovoked attack by members of the prescribed Islamic movement of Nigerian police personnel in Abuja on Sunday, the 25th of August. Addressing journalists, the first public relations officer, ACP Umlumu Yuwade Jobi, says the incident occurred at Wuse Junction by the traffic light where assailants targeted a police checkpoint and descended heavily on policemen on duty. Two police officers died instantly. Three others are currently receiving treatment in hospital. According to him, police have arrested 97 suspects and recovered several weapons used in the attack. He said the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Betokun, has also reaffirmed the commitment of the force to arrest other involved persons and bring the perpetrators to justice. Police condemns Shahid's attack in Abuja Others operatives to hunt for sponsors through killers of policemen. As police confirms arrests of 97 suspects, IGP places measures to seek justice for slain call. The Nigeria Police Force has condemned vehemently an unprovoked attack by members of the proscribed Islamic movement of Nigeria, IMN, commonly known as the Shiite Group of police personnel in Abuja on August 25, 2024. The Inspector General of Police offers heartfelt sympathies to the grieving families of the fallen police officers. Now for more updates, a security consultant, retired group captain, Shewo Sadiq, joins me on the news. Good to have you join us. All right, I understand we have um, a connection problem with um, retired group captain Shehu Sadiq. Once we connect with him, we'll have that conversation with him. But we're staying on security. The governor of Kaduna State has acknowledged a significant improvement in security in Beningwari over the past six months. 
He made the statement while launching a 35.6 kilometer road project. It is a major step towards connecting the 62 farming communities. We bring you details in this report. For years, Briningwari local government area of Kaduna State has been a hotbed of insecurity with terrorist attacks, kidnappings and banditry bringing fear to residents and stifling economic growth. Despite its wealth of natural resources and fertile land, the region's development has been severely hampered. In a bold move, Governor Obasani is initiating a 35.6-kilometer road project, the first of its kind in Brainingwari since the security situation deteriorated. We are committed to facilitating the resumption of business activities in this local government. My presence here to plug up the reconstruction of this 35.6 kilometer road. And to other stories, the National Association of Resident Doctors has commenced a seven day warning strike over the abduction of Dr. Ghani Yatmola, who still remains in captivity after eight months. Chairman of NAD at the National Hospital Abuja, Larry Babajide, says the strike, which started at 12 a.m. on Monday, is a total strike with no emergency care for patients across all tertiary hospitals in the country. Hemi Balogun has details. It has been almost eight months since Dr. Ganyad Papola was abducted from her home alongside her husband and nephew at the National Eye Center in Kaduna State. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors say they have been quiet, waiting for the government and security authorities to help rescue the nursing mother. But they feel it is now necessary they also take action to push for her rescue or release. Yes. We spoke with the president of NAD at the National Hospital Abuja, who says desperate times call for desperate measures. We called that we held our National Executive Council meeting um, sometime in July in Castina. And rising from that meeting, we resolved that we issue an ultimatum to government to get Dr. Daniel Popola out of captivity. Uh, following which, uh, failure to do that, we are going to proceed on uh, uh, a strike. And um, the tentative date was 26th of August, which is today. Meanwhile, patients in waiting halls of the hospital complain of longer waiting time since their arrival due to the ongoing strike. Gilbert Ayam says his experience has been disheartening since he got to the hospital this morning. I couldn't go to work. My wife couldn't go to work. We had to bring the children for, for checkup. The last people that should go on strike in this country as of today, with the way the economy is, are the doctors. So whatever the challenges are, I think it's, it's something that needs uh, serious and urgent attention. We have been here since around 7 to 7.30. We are waiting for Dr. Folios to hear they say they, they're going on strike. The NAD president urges patients to show understanding as their action is necessary to pile pressure on government and security agencies to bring Dr. Ghani at home. Um, there's ongoing talks with the security agencies, but if we see um, the sincerity of purpose and there's a need to share the strike, then definitely we will. If not, then we'll just wait for one week and then we'll call off the strike. More than 70 tertiary centers across the country took part in a march last week to protest Dr. Ganyat's continuous captivity. On Tuesday, the 27th of August 2024, will make it exactly eight months since Dr. Ganyat Popola, a nursing mother, was abducted at the National Ice Center in Kaduna State. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors insists they will continue the strike until she is released and brought home hale and hearty. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja. Let's now bring in the National President Association of Resident Doctors, um, Dele Abdullahi. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much for having me. So the last time we, we had a conversation on, on this was when um, there was a protest in some institutions you know, across the country and then um, you had given, you know, I think 21 days notice for, for federal government to, you know, or somebody to address the issue. Between then and now, um, what have you heard from the federal government or the, the police? Well, um, thank you very, very much for that question. Like uh, you correctly said, this process has been a very, very long one. We had initially started with media engagements, then we started, we continued with the protest about two weeks ago. And we've issued two ultimatums, separate ultimatums, before now. Yes, we've seen different actions from our parent ministry, letters being written to the security agents. And also, we had a meeting today with the Honorable Minister for State. But till now, 
we have partial information from the security agents, but nothing concrete and specific, maybe because of the sensitivity of the issue. But this does not really boil so much of confidence in our members, and the spirit is resulting in agitations amongst our members. When you say partial information from security agencies, what have you been told? Well, we've been informed that they are working on it, that they want to, that they are trying to go through their protocol to ensure a release. But as it stands right now, we do not know what they're doing, and eight months is a very, very long time to be in captivity. You can imagine a woman, a breastfeeding mother, having to be in captivity away from her, her family, away from her child, away from the other four children for eight months. It's not a very palatable thought to have it in the mind. And to think that this individual has served this country for a very long time, the job of the federal government is to, provide, to protect our lives and properties, and we feel it's not being done well enough. And you have, um, this is a seven-day warning strike, um, which is, a, I mean, barely a week. But some would say if nothing has happened in eight months, what do you expect to happen in one week? But what are your expectations uh, for the, in the next seven days? Is it that she's released or that there is a, some, some sort of engagement with the association? Well, the aim of this strike is for her to be released. The aim of all we've been doing is for her to be released. We are okay with the engagement. We will appreciate the engagement, more information, and also appreciate uh, clear activities to ensure this. But we are only focused on our getting released. Getting Dr. Pokwala Ghaniad back is the only wish that we have, and that is what we are holding on to. Mm. Dr. Abdullahi, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we'll continue to engage you and members of your, uh, your association in the cause of this um, strike. We've been speaking with the national president of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Um, Dili Abdullahi. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in to Smart Ocas on TV show. Keep exploring, stay curious, and never stop getting the latest information happening around. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share to keep the intellect flowing. Until next time, keep sharpening and be smart.